Okay. First hold and first clutch. What we're going to do on here is we're going to find the O-ring that the biggest one that we can fit on here without it being too loose. Probably that one right there. And then the two that go inside of here are really close to each other. And the top one is just a tad bit smaller than the bottom one. Those look pretty good right there. Move that up really good. And these little flapper valves, you can check them and make sure that they're holding fluid and releasing fluid when you push on them. I have seen one bad, only one, in the entire time I've been doing Hondas, and that's 38 years now, something like that. So it doesn't happen that often. It does happen, but just not that often. Loop that up really well. We have O-ring goes in here. This would be the smaller ones. The rest that's left here go for a second clutch. Also on here is a cushion plate. It normally stays on here. I just popped it off to measure it. I believe it was like uh, 72, 74 thousandths. I just leave it on there. All right, uh, return spring, retainer, short end of the taper up again. Okay, I have steels that go on the inside. They have to fit down inside there in our clutches. We're going to stack that up. There is no allowance for clearance here again, so use quality stuff or it will probably come out wrong. If you use good stuff, it always comes out right. Uh, pressure plate with the step up and we have a cushion plate with the cone up dish up however you want to say it then we have steels and clutches and I guess I should measure that I measured the others uh. all right we're starting off 69 thousandths on the steels And 77 thousandths on the clutches. The pressure plate. And usually uh, when it comes out about perfect, it's, it's just barely below the surface of where this pressure plate sits. 194 thousandths on the pressure plate. The cushion plate. 74 thousandths and uh, steels 62 clutches 76 pressure plate 239 to the top 143 on the step and the snap ring 70 thousandths and I get comments all the time no I do not soak my clutches if you want to soak your clutches more power to you I haven't never noticed a difference one way or the other so if you want to do it do it if you don't don't 
camera's acting weird. So hopefully we're getting this. Alright, third clutch drum. That goes on the intermediary shaft. Have uh, Usually the better kits have all the packages marked. So it's kind of a little bit difficult to mix up which one goes with what. Uh, you got an inner and an outer o-ring. Lube that up really well. Now I don't have a camera over at the foot press, so you're not going to be able to see that. Return spring, the retainer, short end of the taper of the snap ring up towards us again. Okay, and we have a cushion plate. We 74 thousandths. The dish is going to be down, and some people seem to have a problem with what I'm talking about there. The cone shaped is down. Steels are 76 thousandths. Clutches are. 75. Now there is no allowance for clearance here, so if it comes out wrong, you did something wrong, you use crappy clutches, which can be real variance in uh, thickness. So try to go with good clutches, try to go with Ray Bestus. And pressure plate is 236 to the top. Uh, 89 thousandths to the step. The snap ring is 72 thousandths. That looks pretty good. On our shaft here we have two O-rings. to lube that up again. The drum sits on top of that. This washer is selective. We have a flat bearing, cage bearing, gear, flat bearing. This gear goes with this side down. Uh, it's got to be pressed on. I do it with my arbor press. You can do it however you want to. I don't have a camera there, so you're not going to be able to see that. Okay, here again, there is a measurement for the clearance here for that selective washer. If you haven't changed anything, it shouldn't have changed anything. Uh, the clearance is still two thousandths to eighteen thousandths. Two half moon washers. Our retainer goes around those again. Snap ring with the short end of the taper up again. Alright, then we have a selective washer. It sits on top here. Once this goes down into the case, you measure from the case to the top of this washer. Uh, I believe it was man. I just keep getting interrupted today. I believe it was five inches, 267 thousandths to five inches, 271 thousandths and then you adjust this accordingly there again if you haven't changed anything it shouldn't have changed anything oh on the back side here uh, be careful changing these out especially with the cheap kits they tend to not fit properly and not seal properly even with the good kits i i usually do not change these out 
They are scarf cut. They are plastic. Be careful bending them out. You want to go just enough to put it on there. You will break the back of them. You will not fill it. And they will not seal properly. They go together just like so. If you do fill a snap, you definitely broke it. So, uh, like I say, I normally don't even take these off. I normally do not change them. Uh, especially if these things are sticking way out. Uh, with a drum like this one that you put in separately, it's not that big of a deal. Sometimes uh, it's very easy to break these rings. But putting a drum in by itself, you can generally get it in there. It's when you're having to stack two and three shafts at a time that you're definitely going to screw these up. So I don't change them at all. Usually unless they're, they're just broken or it's had water in it, which is very rare on these units. All right, fourth and fifth clutch. They both have O-rings, just like all the others. Uh, my fourth clutches, or actually my fourth steels are wrong, so I'm going to have to wait on those. They'll be put in the same way. The pressure plates are selective on these. The thicknesses and then part numbers are all the same for both fourth and fifth. So we got a return spring retainer, short end of the taper up. I'm gonna do both of these at the same time. Here's our return spring, our retainer, short end of the taper up on that also. Okay, on our fifth gear side, cushion plate, dish down, 56 thousandths, steels, 62. Clutches 79. Like I said, the uh, pressure plate is selective, but I'll tell you what mine measures. Uh, 237 overall. This is where they actually measure from. This one's 91 thousandths. Snap ring is 71 thousandths. Good. The dish down again on the cushion plate, 57 thousandths. The steels are going to be 79, I believe. 74. The clutches are the same at 77. The pressure plate on this one is 88. Snap ring is 69, and we'll see how that comes out when the steels get here. I uh, don't know when that's going to be, so we're quickly coming up on a standstill. Uh, we can do the valve body portion of it, have the case ready to stack this. Uh, that's going to be about all we can do. Okay, second clutch. O rings again on the piston. Yeah, that one's a little bit big. So I swapped one out. I'm going to have to go back into this drum and get the right one. Okay, same drill as before. Um, lube it up, piston in. 
uh, return spring retainer short end of the taper of the snap ring up. I'm not get down. Alright, my piston must not be all the way down there. I'll deal with that in a minute. Alright, this thing here would uh, does basically the same thing as the cushion plate normally just stays in there. The dish is going to be down to 70 thousandths. And it just pops in there. Steals 71 thousandths. Clutches 76. Pressure plate 234 to the top, 91 thousandths on the step, and 70 thousandths on the snap ring. Alright, look good there. Let me straighten this drum out. Alright, for our sprag assembly, brass washer with this lip down. This bearing with this lip right here up and we'll press this in on the arbor press. Got this sprag with this lip right here. It's going to face up. I don't normally take this apart. I'll show you how to check it here in a minute. I usually just hand wash it in a solvent. Okay, we've got a washer and then another bearing that goes on top. Go we'll press that in. Okay, here we got a snap ring that goes in right here. Got our race. You want to make sure that these are not all grooved up. If your sprag is not holding properly, you definitely want to check those right there. All right, now. Yeah. Go. Okay. So turning properly, we're going to hold this gear. It's going to turn clockwise, clock counterclockwise go press this on all right when you take the sprag and you spin it if it stops really quickly you're okay it's when it spins you know probably a half a turn or more especially if it's more uh, you're gonna want to take this apart and check it and replace the sprag Okay, on here we have three O-rings on this side. And we have to do this a little different than I normally do because I'm missing a part.
Get two O-rings on this side. Normally I would put this side together first, but I'm missing the clip that holds this drum on. And the only thing that clip does is keep the drum up in here while you assemble it. It doesn't actually do anything other than that. There are two ceiling rings on here. Again, they are scarf cut. I don't change them. So we're going to assemble this side of it first. Um, we have this gear. Goes in just like that with this step up. We have a flat bearing there. We have a collar with the uh, step up. We have our caged bearing. We have our sprag assembly. We have flat bearing. We have the race. This is a selective race. Here again, if you don't change anything, you shouldn't need to change anything. It should come out proper. Go ahead and lube up your O-rings. This is where you might screw up. So we're going to put our drum on, turn our clutches till it seats in place. Okay, sounds like it's down. I need to go press this bearing into place. Then we have this washer that goes on top. There's an X on one side that faces up. These little splines are going to fit on these splines right here. And I'm going to need to hold this shaft still, so I'm going to do it over there and then tighten our nut down. And it is uh, standard threads, I believe. I wonder if they screwed up the threads on this at all. Yeah, just a little. I may have to straighten these threads out if I can't get this to start on there. Okay, it looks like it's going to go. So, then I got to tighten that down. So once I get that down, I'll be back. Okay, 36 millimeter on the nut. Uh, stake it in place and on this side over here we have a flat bearing there is a bearing here there's no need to take this apart just make sure it's not all screwed up I have a caged bearing it goes on here go ahead and lube up our o-rings go ahead and put this on here we've got a flat bearing that goes on here and I'm gonna try to get it held in place probably just gonna fall off but we got a lip on this and we want that to be sitting up on that lip and then this splines onto the shaft just like so Just need to get this to spline in. And we've got at least one clutch left. Come on, baby, drop. All right, why are we? 
we not want to drop. Got still one clutch. All right, we gotta figure out why our last clutch is not dropping. drop and then I will be back Okay, I found this happens quite often. As soon as I turned the camera off, the drum dropped down. So it just didn't want to line up. Let me set this over here. Uh, that little clip's gonna go on here and hold that drum on. Set this over here so it doesn't fall apart on me. On the main shaft, you have four ceiling rings. They're scarf cut again. I do not change them. On the front part of the shaft here, or the back part of the shaft. We have three O-rings that go on here. There's no need to take any of this other apart. I've never seen any of it bad. You can roll it around, you can feel if it's bad. Then I would take it apart. Other than that, I would just leave it alone. It's just creating a whole lot of work for yourself that you don't need to do. Get these O-rings on here. Lube that up. Okay, if you're gonna take it apart, it presses off. Uh, this gear, I would just leave it on there. I would not even attempt to take it off. You're gonna replace the whole thing anyway, if it's bad. Uh, you press the gear off, there's a race here. There's a race on the back. Uh, there's a snap ring that holds that bearing that's in the center and then right here you don't need to take this off either there's a snap ring that holds that on if it's bad and you need to replace it all right let me get the drums over here and then uh, we'll drum single drum not multiple drums Okay, P35A counter shaft. We have the counter shaft. We have this gear, and this is going to face up. We have flat bearing, caged bearing. We have this gear, the slip. It's going to face down. I have another flat bearing. We have a selective shim. We have this gear, this 
brace side is going to face down, this side is going to face up. <clears throat> we have this gear. This is going to face up. We have this shim. Two half moon clips. This washer with the lip is going to go over those two half moons. And then our snap ring. You'll notice that the tips of it have a taper to them. You want the short end of the taper up towards you. Okay. Now you're supposed to pick up on the gear to check your in play. In play is between two and six thousandths. If you haven't changed anything, there shouldn't be anything to worry about. Uh, there's really actually no need to take any of this apart. Uh, you can roll this around and you can tell if these bearings are bad. I've never seen a bearing bad right here. So you can leave all this together, but if you happen to take it apart, that's how it goes back together. Okay, one of the other few things I can do. I don't normally take all this off. There's a sleeve that goes here. We've got a cage bearing, our gear, the hub, and this recessed side faces up. I gotta press that on and then we'll assemble all three shafts at the same time into the case. Okay, we have a sleeve that goes in the back case. There's two O-rings that go on here. One is smaller than the other. There's a pin that goes through here to hold this tube in. Don't take the tube out. There's no need to take it out. There's a lineup tab here where it goes into the case. Here's an O-ring that goes down on this plate right here. Uh, the one they gave me in the kit's wrong size, so I'm gonna have to go hunt one up. But the way I recommend that you do it is you put the O-ring down into the uh, sleeve first. Then put the O-ring on here and Make sure that it will go up flush. And then this lineup right here needs to go right here in those two spots. So make sure that that's lined up. When it is, snap ring holds that in. You'll want the short end of the taper up again on that. I'm not gonna put it in because I need to change that. And then sitting on top of this, will be this snap ring. It doesn't really grow on a groove. It just sits there and then the book, uh, bearing pushes up against here. All right, so I got to change that out on our reverse idler. Really no need to take this out of the case. This is just in case you happen to have done it. Uh, a washer, two caged bearings. The step faces up. The, another washer, short end of the taper up on your snap ring. And then it just pops into that groove. There's two dowel pins in the case that lines this up. Two 12 millimeters that holds that in. On our differential, there's the adjustment shim, the oil slinger, and the race. Uh, there's also these bearings that go into the case. There's no need to take them out. There's this bearing that goes in the case. There's no need to take it out. Underneath it is a 10 millimeter uh, bolt that plugs off a port. A snap ring that goes into the case to hold the bearing. Don't need to take it out of the case either. On here, we have our return filter. There's an O-ring that goes around here. 
Go ahead and lube that up. This end goes into here. Do not put this end in. You will block off your return cooler flow. It goes just like that. Your tube goes in just like so. This is gonna all sit in the case. There's a 10 millimeter, holds that in. Two 10 millimeters hold this in. All right, in the case, there's also this retainer and this bearing. The bearing goes with the recessed side facing outwards. There's no need to take this out of the case. When you take this tranny apart, just take the nut and this washer off. The washer is going to go with that X right there facing up. This is going to spline into the splines. The nut's going to hold the shaft in. Okay, I gotta go find that O-ring and then we'll stick all this in the case. Okay. <clears throat> we have our sleeve. We lube that up. Go ahead and lube everything up. Our little tab has to fit in that hole right there. And to get this thing out, um, block this hole and shoot air through that hole right there. Do not stick your face over it because that thing is going to come out of there with a great deal of force. So keep your face away from it. Like I said, this uh, does not have a snap ring groove. This, this snap ring just sits down on top of that. The bearings are going to push against it and keep it in. We have the dowel pins in here. Well, i got to put, uh, put my bearing in first. Go ahead and put this snap ring in. The bearing is on the shaft that belongs here. In order to get this case half on, we're going to have to spread that apart as it's going down. Uh, we have the snap ring for this bearing here. Yep, went all the way through. ahead and lube up your bearing. You might even want to take some very fine sandpaper and sand around that. You want it just to go in fairly straight. Okay, I went a little too far. Okay, there we go. Now I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this with the camera right there. We'll try it. I didn't, don't know if I said, but 
the recessed area goes up, the snap ring groove is up. Just a tad. There we go. And we're all the way in. Okay. You can go ahead and leave everything on the outside. We have a bearing. Oh, wrong one. Small bearing that goes here. out of here. here a little too large filter assembly make sure our filter is in there the proper way
Okay, our reverse idler assembly. Two dowel pins are in the case. Okay, when it gets to a certain point, we're also going to have to turn this idler to where it meshes into the two gears here as we're spreading that out. adjustment shim, oil slinger, and our race. Okay, that is it for the inside. We'll do the outside when we get there. Okay, uh, I guess we ought to measure this stuff. I don't I think I measured the other one, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, inner spring on this one, inch 788, 404, 83. Outer spring, 2.931, O-rings on here. You can lube these up if you want to. They really go in pretty easy. Um, you don't have to, to lube them up. You want to keep the opening of the snap ring away from the opening there. Okay, this accumulator, two inch 92 thousandths, 753, 122. O-ring again. Keep the opening away from the opening again. Just make sure that you get that snap ring all the way down in there, otherwise the body won't sit flush. Inner spring, 1.918, 445, 82. Outer, 3 inch, 17, 688. 88. All right, opening away from the opening again. All right, on the top side here, we got the accumulator. Spring inch 760, 763, 117. The seat goes with the tip down in the middle of the spring. 
short end of the taper up towards us again. Oops, not all the way in. Make sure we're in that groove. Yes, we are. Okay, the bolts, I don't remember exactly where I took them out of. The short tube, inch 569 went right there. The two long ones, these were bent. I did straighten them out. I used a punch. What is this? Quarter inch punch from Mac. I used that to go up into where it was bent, which was this end. It was bent at about a 45 degree angle. And I just kept bending this around and driving this in, straightening it out. I think it got it pretty straight. Since it, nothing rotational is going to go on here, it's just going to uh, go up into the back of the case. I think it would have worked fine. I'm missing some parts, so I had to have them order them from Honda. So I went ahead and had them get the tubes while they were at it. The two long ones go here, they're five inch, nine, 68. They both go there. Uh, let's see, I think these two were the same. Some of them may have filters up in the back of them, just make sure that they're free. Uh, if the filters fall off and you lose them, it is it's no big deal, don't worry about it, just leave them out. These two were two inch, 297 uh, filters will go down inside uh, let's see the next one trans 351 I believe was here I'll have to double check that next one is 4 inch 167 I believe it was right there yeah, let me check my picture. I believe these were backwards. That goes there. That goes there. Okay. We'll double check that once we get everything together. And we're going into the case. Now let's look here. I don't take the solenoids off. Uh, the black solenoid goes in first, brown solenoid sitting on top. Uh, common bolt holds that in. This one is shift solenoid A, C, D, and B. Putting the Sonex ones in, make sure the O rings looped up really well. Retainer. Okay. Manual valve goes in. Now we can orient that later. The lubrication check valve goes in with the small end in. Goes in right there. Uh, 219 thousandths steel ball goes right there. Spring on top. Uh, they want the Sonax check valve goes in here. It's going to sit spring down, check valve there. There is filter that goes up here. Always leave them out. You can put them in if you want to. There's two um, dowel pins that go in the case for there. And then our bolts 
and hold it in. There's three 12s. There's three short ones, two medium ones, and two long ones. Yeah, right there. Okay. Get the next section and we'll be back for that. Okay, we got two dowel pins again that are going to go down. Then the separator plate that's going to go down. Then we have this arm. It's actually a stator. Got an O-ring that goes on here. This is going to go in here. Then on our regulator body, we have, they want to put the Sonax valve in, so before you do, make sure the length is the same and the land diameters are the same. Also, make sure that somebody has not done the transgo kit in here before and drilled in here. If they have, then you cannot do this because it's you can't have two holes. This has a hole drilled into the valve to uh, make up for that. You'll see that the factory one has a hole here but no hole here. See that the Sonex one has an extra hole. So make sure that it will work before you put it in there. We have the valve, inner spring, middle spring, outer spring, the retaining bolt has a little pin or a little raised area on it. That's got to go in right there. So make sure that it does. Do this by hand. You do not want to put any kind of tools on it and deform it and make it to where it will not slide in and out easily. So put it in by hand. See if we can get this to start. I see if I can do this where the camera can see it. Go ahead and get this started in there. You're gonna feel it bottom out. Actually, I'm not in far enough. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this on camera or not. All right, I can feel it bottoming out. It's not in the groove. Push and turn until, I was trying to do this where the camera can see it. It's just not easy. Let's see if I off a little bit. Yep. Got it turned just a little bit. Okay, make sure that you can screw it in by hand all the way down and then just snug it up and you might want to make sure it's still moving in and out like it's supposed to be. Here we go, and the reverse servo has an O-ring on it. Go ahead and lube that up. We have the detents here. You can go right there. There we go. The accumulator has no ring on it. Spring. We have these shoulder bolts on there. Spring has to go in the center of the that has to go in the center of the spring. Okay, let's see if I can get this proper. The longest bolt goes here. The four next longest bolts go 
there. The next longest goes there. Two shorter ones go here. There's a shield that goes around for the, uh, one of them holds a filter. The other one, they both hold a shield that goes uh, around the differential. So once we get there, we'll show you that. Uh, let's see. Solenoid body next, I guess. Okay, we have the two dial pins again. Almost every single layer is going to have two dial pins. And we have the bottom plate that goes on there. When the bottom plate goes on, this goes on. The 10 millimeter bolt goes here. It is two inches. 577 this choke valve goes this way right here 219,000 steel ball goes there there and there will be two more dowel pins and then a separator plate that uh, goes on top and in between here is going to be our detent for our manual valve okay I know this is a little bit further away I think it's gonna get the best overall view on our front case half gonna want to make sure that the bearings all the way back Sometimes when you put them in the machine, like that one was moved out just a little bit. Some of them move out quite a bit. So once you do that, you, you got two options. You can I just stake them in place with the center punch. Sonex does make a shim that you can put on your torque converter that will keep that push back. Then you need to look at your front seal. And this is true with any Honda. Uh, Grab the wrong one. You look on your seal, sometimes it has an arrow. If it doesn't have the arrow, uh, look at the little angle on the seal right there. Make sure that it matches. If you put one that the arrow is going the other direction or them lines are going the other direction, it will leak. All right, so our arrows go in the same direction. I put my front seals in dry. Just put them in flush. Axle seal, I do put grease on it. Make sure that they are the same diameter in inner and outer. Since this is a not an all-wheel drive, it has this plate here and it has an O-ring on it. If it was an all-wheel drive, there would be another seal there. I'm sure I'm getting a picture of this. It is quite a ways away. Okie dokie. Which way was this sitting? We'll only go one direction. 14 millimeters on that. I'll have 
to look up the torque spec on that. Probably somewhere around 25 foot pounds. Right now we'll just make sure that we got it tight. And I'll check it again with the torque specs later. entirely too much stuff on my bench right now. Okay, if this was an all-wheel drive, there would be a, a gear going down inside of there, and there would be another shim on top, like is on top of... the top of this drum right here, there would be one on top of it. Then our differential would go in, it would have another uh, drive gear that would be on the differential that is not on this one. So that, that would go in there. Our magnet looks like this. It's going to go in just right there. Our oil slinger here. Let's see, how is this going? This was going Let's see here. Put this one here. There we go. It's in just like that. Normally I just leave these in there. Okay, down inside of here is this little bearing. It may not slide in as easily. It just fell out when I flipped it over. It did go in easy. This is the sleeve I was talking about. You need to make sure this thing is not cracked. I used a snap-on, what do they call it? Snap-on blind, blind, uh, Line bearing puller uh, T TA78. Well, I'll put it down in the descriptions. I think it was a TA78. Right, put our O rings on here. that up really well go ahead and lube up our take some fine sandpaper sand that out sand on the edge of your bearing because it kind of seizes up on there and it's a pretty stout little pull sometimes uh, just heating it up in the cooker will do it sometimes it won't this time it didn't it, it was still pretty tough to get it out and sometimes I can't get them out at all when I can't get them out, I just have to hope for the best. Uh, the little 
slot right there is where the sleeve lines up. And make sure we get it lined up. And pop down in there. And I'm going to grease this up just a little bit. Help it slide a little bit easier, we hope. May have to heat this up a little bit. Okay, then we want to drive this down until our keeper will go in and it should be pretty much once it's almost bottomed out. bolt and our keeper this is going to sit right back here sometimes you get a new one of those uh, little deals to bend up and keep it from turning sometimes you don't we didn't get one this time so Usually only one of the tabs is bent up, so I just bend the other one up. Then our bearing sits in just like that. And we have this tube and the bolt that holds it in. We have this plate, it was in right there, this bearing here, this plate this bearing here goes with the step up this plate and I should put that in before I put that in
Okay. Now. And separator pipe. Yep, turn it the right direction. Two dowel pins. One goes down here. One goes up here. We have our gears. You can lube these up if you want to. The uh, line faces down. Oh, can't finish putting this together because I forgot about this. It really puts a damper on things. Okay. Got my manual valve in backwards. Goes over here. Okay, and let's go ahead and measure these. Even though I think we've already measured them. Inch 803. Inch 403. 803. The 12 millimeter bolts, they're there and there. Inch 406. These three down here. Inch 7 thousandths. Okay, let's see. Can't do this portion down here because of that. But we can do up here. I think we can get a lot of this done up here. All right, two dowel pins. One there and there. check valve go all right bottom separator plate filter there if you want to put it in I don't put them in let's remember how this goes just like so all right my valve body right here make sure we got the three check balls in there you gotta find my check valve I guess you should get a picture of that. Make sure your check valve goes in, stem down. Okay, two dowel pins, upper separator plate, we have a tube that is 2 inch 274, goes right there, 
we have our detent it goes right there and this sits on top make sure that tube goes in that hole in the back side there right there Okay, let's get our bolts in the way that they need to be, and then we'll measure them. That's all of them. All right, let's measure them. I'm gonna start in the corner up here. Three inch, 941. Three inch, 551. Three inch, 942. Five inch, 127. 5 inch 714 5 inch and 4 inch 546 4 inch 547 3 inch 941 3 inch 558 2 inch 565, 3 inch 554. that in until we put the other in. We have our dowel pins that go in the case there and over here. I'm going to put our check valve here so we don't forget it. We have this tube here. It's uh, one is bigger 393 out the outside diameter, four inch, eight thirty-three. There, uh, right there. And we have a tube 
two inch 454 right there. Let's see here. We need two dowel pins. One going there. One going there. And this will be going on there. But we got to put the deal in. We have our stator and the o-ring is on the, our stator stop there go ahead and move this up okay um, we are at a standstill most of my parts are not going to show up for almost a week so this part should show up today or tomorrow hopefully today because i would like to get this off of my bench okay we'll be back when we get some parts okay i got that upside down that goes this way make sure yeah okay i can go ahead and put the linkage on I realized that after the fact and realized when I tried to see if it would fit without having to put this on over here that I had it on upside down. Okay, and our linkage can go in, we have to get this in here, this is going to hook on right here. To turn this back because we don't want the park mechanism pushing this out. Okay, we have that there. Spring is going to sit just like so, and our park going to sit on here and the spring has to go up in that hole there we go and our stop is going to sit right there and hold that up but we don't want that in there right now so this is going to stay out don't forget to put it in Okay, uh, we did get the part in for here, 
uh, in case you're interested. The Sonax valve. Let's see if I can dig this back out of here. Without screwing it up. Okay, make sure you get the right one because the first one they sent me was wrong. Um, there are different ones for different models, so put a little grease to hold the valve up inside there, putting the castle in down, and then this has to sit on top, and it's spring loaded, so it's going to push it off of there. I think the best way to do it is to not put it all the way down. And then set this on top of it that way as it pushes it down it'll hopefully stay lined up and be proper okay we have bolts uh, I guess I should turn this on Probably already got flagged for copyright infringement. Uh, 3.359, 2.965, there's four of those. And I think it was right there. And we have 2.379. And we have two that are an inch 607. Okay, it's probably going to be it for this week on this one. can't put my diff in because I don't have my filter. We could have put the diff and that in and then we're going to stack the main shaft, counter shaft and the secondary shaft all at the same time. Now you can assemble it separate. I think it's harder. It is hard stacking it all together but it, I think it's harder doing it the other way. So this is the way I do it. So we'll be back next week um, hopefully I'll get all my parts all right finally got our filter differential goes in we got two bolts three inch 943 and the other one sorry only one bolts that the other bolt is three inch 356 
have this shaft can go ahead and go in. Make sure your washer is on top. If you had the all-wheel drive, you're going to have the other one over here, gear, and there will be another shim like this on top of that. Okay, I gotta go get somebody to help me stack all three of these shafts in at the same time. You want to make sure that the stop for your park is not in there. But <coughs> otherwise, it will not be back far enough to get it in there. And make sure that's down. I think, uh... Yeah, I do believe we're ready to go in. Alright. I did forget snap ring for our other shaft this is it right here here's your part number and it just holds the back end on on here all right now let me go find some uh, this is the one on the corner right Park stop in before you forget. Okay, make sure we're good to go. You want your slider to be on your fork like so step up this little stop goes underneath Bend the tab over. All right, we got a collar, cage bearing, this gear. Pick the appropriate case gasket for what you have. this bearing here this groove down the step up has a dish to it and we want the dish down and we're left-handed threads on this one thirty six millimeter
Okay, you stake that in place. Okay, as I'm going down, I have to spread this snap ring out. The idler is going to be right here. I have to turn that to where these two gears mesh. And let's see. I think that's it. Usually I've got this back further where I can see everything that's going on. to move this camera. It's going to be like that, I think. Okay, I think we went down. And you can pull up on this shaft, and the snap ring should pop into place. This shaft here, we have the X again. Splines have to spline in the spline. The X needs to be up. This one's right-handed threads. Oh, bigger. Inch and seven sixteenths. It's a little big, but all right. I'm gonna make sure that nothing's rubbing when I turn the gear. Okay, I believe we are good. I'm gonna stake that in place. I 
Okay. We got the washer and our plug. Dow pins right here. We got the O-ring on our cover. Line your Dow pins up. Three twelves. Case bolts or 14s. You get this bracket. The bolt is three inches, eight ninety-one, and we are going this way. this bracket two bolts are 5 inch 869 and this one is a little fatter than everything else threads are a little different 4.799 
same. This thing's a beast. Point two eight four three point eight nope three point five oh eight and three point eight eight five all right So drain plug, three eighths ratchet. This is about as far out as we're gonna get. Pressure switch with the washer. Speed sensor with the O ring. Speed sensor with the O ring and a bracket it goes on here. Ten millimeters that hold that in. I guess we might as well measure them. Nine point Have the temp sensor and a cooler line o ring on the temp sensor. And got that upside down. Washer on each side of the banjo bolt. Ten millimeter for that is point seven six five. Cooler line with banjo bolts, uh, washers, and the bolt. Seventeen millimeters on that on the banjo bolts. And this 10 millimeter is the same.
10 millimeter on the tip sensor, 9.32, and 0.932. That'd be a hell of a bolt for that. Our lever seal, let's lube up all of it. this on first. We have two dowel pins. Gasket. Wiring harness with the o-ring. Ten millimeter bolt is one inch. Brown to brown, black to black. Red there, green. Yellow and orange. All right, our housing. Got one inch six oh six same and the rest of these I believe yeah, that one's the same it goes there okay, the rest of these are one inch four oh nine Okay, let me make sure we got the sizes right. 1.407, same. 1.606 Okay, 1.606 to here 1.407 the rest
we got a gasket it goes on here we got three o-rings go on our pipes they're kind of a little bit fatter than the other our linear solenoid all right i think this is this is the long one the rest of these are short i believe okay the short ones inch 200 a long one two inch 375 Neutral switch. I got these bolts and they are one inch one forty. Neutral. There's a line right here. Line that up. We have our linkage. The stop bracket, or I don't know what exactly you would call it. But that bracket, lock washer, and 12 millimeter nut. Actually, got that backwards. Nut, I mean, our lock washer or bracket, and then our nut. Come on, start. These can be really finicky. Don't just try to stick it on there after you get a couple threads started. If it's not going down easy, this thing's not right and what you'll end up doing is screwing up the threads. It's got to be on there just so. So if it's not wanting to go by hand, it's, you, you don't have it on there right. I don't know why these are so finicky. They love to cross thread. I may have to get thread chaser after this thing. Come on now. There we go, finally. Bend your tab over. We have filler tube dipstick o-ring on that I don't think you can see it but it goes right underneath this bracket and there's a 10 millimeter holding that on it is 
Got the gray pressure switch and washer. Goes right there. Okay, we got the oiling tube one inch all right we got a tube that is 1.425 that does have a filter on it goes down we have a tube that is 2.092 filter on it it goes down gasket that goes on here and it goes this way two more of them fat o-rings go on here We've got our other linear linear solenoid four bolts that are 1.411 and I got a bolt in the wrong spot it looks like because these all four should be 1.411 so I gotta figure out where I got the wrong bolt at probably over here on this cover Seventeen millimeter on our fill plug. I'm just going to leave it loose because they got to take it loose. We have an O-ring for our torque converter. Most torque converters come with them, but there's one in the kit for it. All right, um, we are done with this transmission.